Does China's latest Dongfeng-51 intercontinental missile really have the ability to cover the globe and break through all defense systems? This question not only touches the nerves of international military observers, but also casts a shadow of uncertainty over the delicate balance of the global strategic landscape. Since 2022, this mysterious weapon has been frequently mentioned in Western media and military forums. And although Chinese officials have never officially disclosed its existence, rumors about it have been swirling like dark currents from the 20,000 kilometer range of the from the range of over 20,000 kilometers of skipping stone trajectory to carry 30 guided nuclear warheads of horrific power to the Antarctic route along the path of direct attack on the U.S. mainland. These fragments of information piece together a picture enough to rewrite the rules of nuclear deterrence in the future as a potential trump card in China's strategic nuclear force system. Rumors of the Dongfeng 51 have always been closely intertwined with technological advances and national strategic needs. Looking back at the history of China's intercontinental missile development from the liquid-fueled Dongfeng 5 to the maneuverable Dongfeng 41, each iteration marks a breakthrough in survivability and strike accuracy. The idea of Dongfeng 51, on the other hand, is widely seen as an all-encompassing subversion of the existing anti-missile system. According to the South China Morning Post and other media reports, its core technology lies in the combination of wave-carrying body gliding and rock-hopping ballistics, which enables the missile to repeatedly leap and dive at the edge of the atmosphere at a speed of Mach 15, and the flight trajectory is unpredictable as if it were floating in the water, so that the traditional interception system is completely ineffective. What's more, it may abandon the traditional ballistic path via the North Pole and instead choose the Antarctic or Asia-Europe continent route, directly bypassing the North American anti-missile network, carefully deployed by the United States. This path choice not only shortens the warning time, but also transforms the global geographic barrier into a strategic breakout advantage. Specifically to the technical level, the East Wind 51, rumored, skipping stone, trajectory and wave riding body design, in fact, is the limit of the extension of the existing hypersonic weapons technology. Russia's Vanguard missile has demonstrated similar capabilities, but its range is limited to 5,500 kilometers, and it relies on conventional ballistic missiles as its carrier. If the Dongfeng 51 really achieves the 20,000 kilometer range and full glide that has been speculated, it would mean that for the first time, it combines hypersonic maneuvering with an intercontinental strike radius which would require pushing the triple boundaries of material science, guidance control, and energy management. For example, the vehicle's friction with air at 20 times the speed of sound generates temperatures of more than 2,000 degrees Celsius, making it difficult for traditional ceramic coatings to withstand dozens of minutes of sustained burning. And China's surge in patents in the areas of ultra-high temperature alloys and active cooling technology in recent years may signal a breakthrough in a key bottleneck. Another example is the skipping stone trajectory which requires the vehicle to precisely control lift at the edge of a thin atmosphere which requires revolutionary advances in aerodynamic shape design and flight control algorithms and chinese universities have ranked first in the world in terms of the number of papers produced in the field of non-constant aerodynamics miniaturization of nuclear warheads is another technological high point the us w88 nuclear warhead weighs only 360 kilograms with a yield of 475,000 tons, while China's existing guided warheads are generally above 600 kilograms. If the Dongfeng 51 to achieve 30 warheads on board, the weight of a single warhead must be compressed to 300 kilograms level, which is a huge challenge to the efficiency of the nuclear charge. Detonation device miniaturization and structural design. It is worth noting that the China Atomic Energy Research Institute in 2023 announced the New neutron source control technology patent is considered by outsiders may enhance the efficiency of nuclear material utilization, which may be a precursor to the technology of warhead miniaturization. However, even if a technological breakthrough is realized, mass production and deployment still need to take into account the cost and reliability, the strategic cost of a missile carrying 30 warheads that fails in its mission due to the malfunction of a single component would be difficult to bear. In the geopolitical dimension, the potential impact of Dongfeng 51 goes far beyond the military context. The choice of an Antarctic trajectory not only circumvents anti-missile interceptions, but also implicitly stress tests the Antarctic Treaty System. The treaty prohibits the militarization of Antarctica, 
but it does not explicitly constrain aircraft passing over it. If many countries follow such a path, Antarctica could become a new strategic corridor, shaking the fragile consensus of global governance. In addition, the rumored anti-satellite capability of the Dongfeng 51, if true, would mean that China is bundling its nuclear deterrence with its space warfare capabilities, a cross-domain deterrent that would force its rivals to invest more resources in the protection of their space assets, thus changing the focus of the arms race. Saltzman, the commander of the U.S. Space Force, has warned that such hybrid deterrence could trigger full-spectrum conflict because adversaries will not be able to tell whether a satellite failure is a cyber attack, a kinetic strike, or a prelude to nuclear deterrence. The battle of perceptions in the international court of public opinion is equally interesting. China's silence on Dongfeng 51 and the frequent revelations of Western intelligence agencies constitute a carefully choreographed, strategic tango. The former maintains deterrence flexibility by neither admitting nor denying, while the latter exaggerates the threat to justify the expansion of military spending. There is a historical precedent for this kind of interaction. In the 1980s, the United States exaggerated the degree of automation of the Soviet Union's dead hand system to pave the way for its own deployment of MX missiles. Now, in the fog of information surrounding the Dongfeng 51, there may be a complex calculation in a three-way game between China and the United States. Russia may be happy to see China share U.S. strategic pressures while the United States needs a sufficiently powerful but controllable threat to maintain NATO cohesion. The United States needs a strong enough but manageable threat to maintain NATO cohesion. For the global arms control system, the Dongfeng 51 symbolizes a more dangerous turning point. The existing new strategic arms reduction treaty, START, limits only the number of deployed nuclear warheads but lacks effective constraints on hypersonic weapons and guided warheads. When missiles can reach the other side of the globe in less than 30 minutes with unpredictable flight trajectories, human warning and decision-making time is compressed to near zero. Rand's 2024 projections show that if the U.S. and China were to confront each other over the Taiwan Strait crisis, the presence of the Dongfeng 51 could force the U.S. to choose to open up the silo the moment a satellite is destroyed. Because there is no way to tell if this is a precursor to a full-scale nuclear strike, the normalization of this glasshouse crisis will greatly enhance the risk of strategic miscalculation. Looking back at history, the emergence of nuclear weapons has put mankind at the crossroads of destruction and restraint. Now, the hypersonic era represented by Dongfeng 51 may be pushing the pendulum to an unknown quadrant. Its ultimate paradox lies in the fact that the more absolute security is pursued, the more collective insecurity may be created. When all countries try to use technological breakthroughs to build an indestructible shield, the end result may be that everyone is trapped in a transparent and fragile glass enclosure, holding a weapon that may go off at any time. Perhaps what humanity needs is not sharper spears or stronger shields, but the ability to learn to live together on the edge of strategic cliffs. But in a world dominated by chains of suspicion, is this realization coming too late? The answer, perhaps, is hidden in the looming ballistic trajectory over Antarctica.